Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Oh, praise God. Welcome to your season of grace. Welcome to a special moment. A special moment with God because it is a special moment with the Word. You know what? The time of the Word is the time of God. And the time of God is the time of the Word. Why? Because in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. So when you have opportunity to be with the word, that is the time of God. Another thing, the word has a supernatural, natural, divine tendency to become flesh. For the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So the word has a natural tendency to becoming flesh in your sickness and becoming your health. Becoming flesh in your situation, in your depression and becoming your celebration. Welcome to your time with God. I'm Patrick Henry Eret. I'm your host. Let's welcome the ministry of the Holy Spirit as it leads us through the world into life. An inclusion comes with a package. What the one you include carries becomes your own once you include it. That's why marriage shouldn't be a joke. It shouldn't be. The woman. Look at the woman, the excitement with which the woman was named. When Adam named the birds, there was no excitement. The first bright morning of the garden for Adam was the day the woman was brought. The first smile of Adam was not at the grasshopper, was not at the hyena, the long, the long neck of the giraffe. It was at the beautiful eyes of the wife that brought him smile. Say, this one is woman. God I, I think you may have suggestion, but leave it. I already know. Because this one is from me. I can connect this one. And the serpent didn't go far. The serpent went to his side. Remember the side is where love is. So the serpent went to the dimension of his love. Be careful what you love. You may likely die from your love. Oof. Oof. So be careful. At every point in time, ask God, analyze my heart. No wonder, no wonder when David sinned against God in Psalm 51, one of the things David talked about is that, give me a new heart. I have tested the old heart. I know what it can do. It can kill me. If you want me to live till tomorrow, he didn't say give me, he didn't say cleanse my heart. He said create in me. What? He didn't say repackage, repair this heart. You don't need your broken hearts back. You just need to tell God, evacuate this heart, give me a new one. I have tested this one, I know what it can bring. I don't need mended heart. I need recreated heart. The heart is the place of life. It's also the place of death. We have seen the serpent, and we have seen who? After the serpent, who? the woman the serpent you cannot understand the serpent the serpent is already crafty but what of the woman the next person in the list is who <laughs> the list of those to be suspected when Trump, when something goes wrong who, um, serpent after that be careful woman here is not just doesn't end with the feminine with the femininity and the womanhood refers to what is closest to you what is on the insider of your destiny many businesses that have been crushed they are crushed from inside not outside competition but the internal scheming in the boardroom the scheming between partners woman but when something goes wrong god will not ask the woman no he asks the man you see the problem when something was about getting wrong woman but after something has gotten wrong, when God comes, not woman first, not even serpent first, man. Why? Why not serpent first? Because God had given man opportunity to name the serpent. Means keep serpent in his place. You see, you are serpent and you are there. You are not there. 
when the scripture says God brought everything, he was including the serpent, the crafty nature of the serpent, which means God had given Adam opportunity to name the serpent. Naming the serpent means you put the serpent under control. You give the serpent a place. For example, if you have a family, one is sweetheart, that's your wife. Is it not true? The other one is Nkoyo, my, my housemaid. Housemaid means she has a place. You have named her. At any point you take her from, your, from her place, there will be confusion. Because her place means she's the housemaid. Every respect should be according to what is due a housemaid. At any point you begin to have some affection towards Nkoyo. You have broken the name you gave. You didn't call Uncle your sweetheart. It is your wife. So you had named her. Who is this one? She is my house help. Means it's to help us in the house. So you name. And when you name, keep it. Keep the principle. Adam named the serpent. But perhaps everything was not in control. And the serpent showed up. What you don't control will show up. Tell somebody, what you don't control will show up. That's true. What you cannot control will show up. It may hide for some time, but it will show up. That means control. Name it. Name it from the beginning. Name it means you put a destiny on it. You put a purpose on it. You, you are, my, you are, you are helping me. You are not destroying me. You, you, you are lifting me. You are my wife. You're going to lift me. You will not bring me down. From the beginning, you are there, not here. And if you are there, you are not here. So the issue of naming means draw a line from the beginning. You are a bird. You will not become animal tomorrow. You are a bird. Stay there. And you animal. You will not become a flying object tomorrow. <laughs> you are there. And at any point, the one you give them wants to break. You break break connection with that if you were supposed to be my servant and you now become my colleague it means handshake has passed gone beyond the elbow adam had named so god didn't worry at the when things went wrong god didn't go to the serpent serpent what happened no it was not the serpent the serpent was already crafty adam was supposed to name the serpent so god took adam responsible held him held him accountable Glory to God. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? When you begin to doubt what God says, then you are ready for permission. The first thing is that in verse 8 of Matthew chapter 19, we have seen that Jesus said, It was not so from the beginning. Moses permitted, and we use the word Moses permitted divorce to, re, no, to break it into other contexts. Whatever permitted sickness, sickness was not so in the beginning. Whatever permitted frustration, frustration was it was not so in the beginning. Depression, it was not so in the beginning. Failure, it was not so in the beginning. Sickness, diseases, not so poverty was not so. It was not so in the beginning. So, what is it that permitted poverty? There's a national communal poverty, but there is a household poverty. And miss the poverty of Nigeria as a nation, there are individual wealth and poverty also. There are some people that no matter if Nigeria becomes Saudi Arabia tomorrow, they will still be poor. Because it's a personal poverty. Personal. It's like a piece of stone you throw into the water, it does not drink water. A piece of stone doesn't drink water. It's a personal poverty. Say, did God really say the issue of doubt? Did God really say? Did God really say? Let me tell you something. There is no marriage. Everybody saying marriage is difficult. Marriage is not working, including the other pastors. Who told you because the man is pastor, he knows God? Who told you that? There is no guarantee that a pastor knows God. So marriages are crumbling because of doubt. The lack of application of the word of God. The first thing the devil does in destroying a destiny is to take you from the world. What he said. 
marriages die from the beginning when dating and relationship premarital relationship is not according to the word and so people dig the pits and they prepare to fall in so the devil is good at telling did god say the setting aside of the standard of god to honor human tradition the setting aside of human of the of the word of god of the standard of god to become friends to parley around with the crafty to become acceptable the woman was just trying to play along with the devil play along with the crowd play along with the crafty agent of hell did god really say that this woman didn't have any reason trying to say what god said if somebody at any reason for any reason at any point concerning any matter question what god said at the beginning walk away don't talk watch look at me what did i say walk away when it comes to argument you cannot defeat the devil i say when it comes to argument phd cannot stand the devil the most mumu demon is more sophisticated than a triple phd carrier so don't talk the woman broke the principle don't be in a conversation with what what negotiates out and mortgage out the word of god the sanctity of the word the sanctity of the word the sanctity of the word did god say that is what has destroyed destinies did god really say in relationship we cannot do this before this if you made a mistake out of ignorance it's okay but if you if you if you begin to negotiate with the word of god the sanctity of the word of god cannot be broken without grave consequences i am repeating the sanctity of the word of god cannot be broken without grave consequences you cannot the devil said the, the first thing the first thing the devil did he didn't bring the fruit he didn't do anything did god really say that's what destroys business that's what destroys relationship that's what destroys marriages that's what destroys ministry woman did god really say when you doubt god you set aside the authority the sovereignty the ability the power of god no longer helps you the moment you doubt him the sovereignty of god no longer covers you the moment you doubt him can you imagine peter peter was walking with the world through the world the word of god through which the waters were made and the word told him come out and when the word tells you come out it is time to do the impossible and peter went out was in fellowship with the world and was dancing on top of water but when he doubted water couldn't support him and the sovereignty of his lord couldn't cover him once you doubt you have left the sovereignty the canopy of the authority and ability of god tell somebody don't doubt so the first thing the devil does is doubt so did god really say you must not eat this the woman started conversation stop conversation woman stop having conversation with unknown people you are married so don't be in a habit of having conversation with people who are not part of that because this woman began a conversation the higher superior intelligence of the, the devil kicked in you shall not die why god is tricking you this god that god you trust in is an evil god god doesn't want you to enjoy what you enjoy what he enjoys look at it you will not certainly die the serpent said to the woman for god knows that when you eat from it your eyes will be open true true your eyes will be open and you will be like god knowing good and evil who will not who will not want to be like god god didn't talk to this woman god already made them as gods they didn't need to be like god see contradiction that's why you need to know the word of god if you are taught in such a way that as a christian you are insecure you need to beg god every day worship god then ask god 
because god has given you rights those who have rights they don't beg beggars are those without right if a beggar on the street begs you well, and all those things because he doesn't have right to your money your son doesn't ask doesn't beg you for money daddy they say we should bring school fees that's all it's an it's an application with rights and when the scripture say we are his son because because we are his son he has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts that christ our Abba, father it means you ask god to ask him means to stay in his word in alignment and he says you are god he has made you a god unto the devil unto everything so you don't need to become a god that's what brings people into secret code and witchcrafts you don't need it you are already a god you are made in his image and likeness so the devil is a liar so the devil is a liar you don't need to be god to be god to be like god you are already he has made you gods unto the nature he has made you rulers he's the ruler over heaven and earth but he has made you a ruler over the earth a little less than the angel according to psalm 8 so the devil is lying here and because somebody opened up to the lie of the devil look at it verse 6 is when the woman saw women women they see you when the woman saw that the fruits of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom she took some and ate she also gave some to her husband and was with her who was with her and he ate it that was the permission that was the day that the foundation was laid for moses to permit divorce even though god didn't permit it that was the day foundation was laid for cancer to be permitted to plague human destinies that was the day that in instantly that moment of eating what god said don't eat you will die somebody ate it and gave to the man i told you guard your heart the woman didn't eat it alone there was no completeness until the man ate it and so if you don't guard what is on your inside it will take you down now you understand the principle of saying guard inside so be careful guard your insider guard your children watch your children be careful where your children go to school pray where you send your children to and pray concerning the hands that will take care of them pray concerning those who will feed them train your children from the first day they are born speaking to their spirit glory to god now you see adam has eaten and the consequence their eyes were truly open the devil said the truth for the first time but their eyes were not open to see what god saw their eyes are, were open to see their nakedness for the first time they realized we were naked that was the day man lost immunity um, immunity marriage lost immunity the little scolding by the husband the little anger by the wife that normally should be harmless can become a reason why marriages are wrecked forever little argument because there is no immunity the man is naked and the woman is naked and both of them are trying to cover you see the man the woman is scared of the husband knowing what happened yesterday the conversation every time chats are deleted places are covered because she is naked and covering and the man is naked covering in business is the same thing immunity loss spiritually that is how people can pray in tongues but when they leave the church they do a different kind of thing because people are living in carnality openness that is when there was permission for a man to fail that was when there was permission for demons to possess human beings spirit husband were permitted spirit wives were permitted so all the things that god didn't do at the beginning were permitted perhaps not by moses but by disobedience it was disobedience the hardness of the heart of the people of israel that empowered moses to to, to permit and the hardness of heart of people in every generation in families permits the devil to afflict permits be careful anger the scriptures they do not allow anger to last till after sunset he said do not give the devil what a full stool an opportunity which means you can be angry with your wife and that can destroy a life of somebody 
the day you are supposed to agree and pray in the night you couldn't agree and pray because you were angry and the devil came in between and snatched your only son snatched business snatched prospect a promise that was coming a blessing that was coming and everybody could see it and it was snatched because permission what have you permitted in your life what have you permitted concerning your marriage ignorance is not an excuse our forefathers sinned in ignorance and today a lot of people carry marine spirits is what the parents have done he said oh in our family line people are always having it because people had done something in ignorance they didn't know but they permitted what have you permitted or what have been permitted over you what is recurrent in the family line as a result of the permission of the past glory to god hallelujah i'm sure you know that the time of the world is the time of god now can you still say that the giant is strong enough that the giant of sickness is strong enough to keep you incapacitated it is not true for the word of god comes with the power of god to make you stronger than the giant but the, the, the point is this if you don't stay in god in salvation the giant always has a way of coming back at you and bringing you down which is why you need salvation you need a place in god salvation is the word it's not about which church you go to it's not about the name and the title you have it's about your place in god and it's about jesus will you just surrender to him and ask him of mercy and if you had always you had known him it's a time of rededication and consecration let me pray with you father in the name of jesus christ for somebody who right now is turning the heart to you in repentance in salvation to accept you as lord and savior in your christ i'm asking let there be a new birth of the holy spirit let there be a restoration let there be a revigoration let somebody walk back into the original as it was in the beginning in the name of jesus christ lord i ask for healing of spirit soul and body father i ask for the door of life to be opened for this one so there will be no no reason whatever for somebody to walk away from you having been surrounded by your love and mercy in the name of jesus christ amen hallelujah another point you can be a partner salvation is never completed and is never complete until you become an agent of salvation look at God, john's gospel chapter 4 the woman that just Christ met at the well transitioned from being somebody in need of help in need of god to somebody who was the sharer of god he took god into the village and the Samaritans came out and met God and said, you know what? It's not just because you told us now we have sinned for ourselves. Will you be an agent of salvation? A partner, that's what I mean. It does not cost so much. The widow smite. No matter how little that you can release so that we can spread this salvation message everywhere. That will make you that Samaritan woman, a disciple and a partaker of the wealth and the blessing and the salvation of our God welcome please take all the information given to you on your screen and if you're listening on radio you you can get the information equally the announcer will come to you connect us by the way if you are in the neighborhood of you tune into uh, planet fm 101.1 every wednesday from 10 to 12 in the afternoon is the ap center of grace and if you are if you are still around you cross river the the neighborhood you check us also on comfort 95.1 fm every tuesday from 11 to 12 we're talking about grace for purpose and grace and inspiration these are the times of god the lord bless you and keep you and may his light shine upon you may you uncover his countenance towards you and give you peace by his blessing do what you could not do in the name of jesus christ amen see you some other time bye bye <laughs>
please call 081 or 090-738-38742. To all our covenant partners and friends, we say thank you. Like the widow observeth, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org